Welcome everyone to Celebration Family Worship Center. So glad you came today. So glad you brought your Bibles. I was so excited Sunday morning that all the kids had their Bibles. And this is God's Word and it helps us grow. So we're going to talk a little bit about a few verses in the Bible and, and the love of God and how mighty God is. And, and I just want to open up a prayer first for Him to bless our time together because he is such a good God, and He has done so much for us. He made a way for us where there was no way. So let's just go to Him and thank Him for all He's done, okay? Dear Jesus, we love you. We thank you that you sent your Son, your only Son, Jesus, to earth to as a human to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, how who was sinless? Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for making a way for us. We love you. And Lord, we just want to start this day off praising you. And thank you for all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Got a puppet back here. She wants to sing you something, okay? So let me, we're just going to start off praising God. So if you're at home, stand up. This is a song that probably you may have heard in the past. If you hadn't, just sing it with it. Jump. Raise your hands, just praise the Lord, okay? All right, let's see. Are you up back here? Okay, let's see. All right, yeah, the kids are here. They're here. A mighty God and he loves us and he sent his son Jesus to die on this cross for us I've got something right here I want to try but I want to think of this little light orange colored as us this is us without Jesus you know in Romans 10 9 and 10 I want to read that to you before we do this uh, let me see. I marked them so it wouldn't take so long. But in Romans 10, oh, let me go back here. 
hope you have your Bibles with you. Romans 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess that you are saved. I wanted to read that to you because I just believe in my heart today. God took me in this direction. It wasn't the direction that I had initially thought of at the first of the week. But God wanted me to come back and read that scripture to you. Guys, the only way, John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to me except through the Father, except through me. You can't get to the Father except through Jesus. And it's like this right here. It's kind of us without Jesus. Just hanging around. Not much going on. Not a lot of action. But you know what? If you take that verse and you say, God, come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. It's kind of like the ABCs. A is admit that you, you're a sinner. B is believe in Jesus with your heart. And C is to confess, um, confess that Jesus is Lord. And that right there, let's pour a little hot water in this right here. And then we'll stir it up. All right, there you are without Jesus. But when you say, Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. You've just admitted that you're a sinner. Believe in your heart that Christ has rose you from the rose from the dead. And go tell everybody. That's what the word confess means. Let people know what God has done for you. And when you've invited him in your heart, there is change that happens. Look how God covers you right there. You know, you may go through some hard times, and we're going to talk about being an overcomer. But when you ask Jesus in your heart, it's just not hidden away in a little spot. And nobody can tell the difference. When you admit that you've sinned, when you believe in your heart that Jesus is, is your Savior and you tell everyone you confess, you're saved. And do you know what? It shows. Now, we saw just a little bit, but look here. This is a lot more since Jesus has come into your life. And that's the way he makes your life. Now, is everything always easy? No. Everything is not always easy. In fact, let me read another verse to you. I want to go to, let's see, I've got a bunch of them, but I want to read to you in 1 John 5, 5, uh, who is it that overcomes the world? Now think about that just a minute. That's a question. Who is it that overcomes the world? You might not feel much like an overcomer. You might feel like you have failed a lot, but... Jesus says, who is it that overcomes the world? Only, only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So if you've asked Jesus in your heart, and he's come live in your heart, and he's forgiven you of your sin, you're an overcomer. You know, sometimes, sometimes in life, things are hard. You've asked Jesus in your heart, you go to school, you're bullied, uh, just all kinds of things happen, and you say, well, I thought that I was a Christian, things were going to be better. Well, listen, I heard this one time. The best day, uh, the worst day of your life is still the best day if you have Christ in your life. You see, you can have the worst day, but it's still, you're still an overcomer. Just remember that God is with you. He has not left you. But there are things you're going to have to do. You can't just ask Jesus in your heart and then just go on about your business like you always have. You know, you're going to have to separate yourself. So let's look at this right here. This might not happen real quick, but let's just say that chocolate milk is us. And we've, and we've asked Jesus in our life, but we're just needing him to help us. And then we just pour this in here.
Now you just, you, we, we're going to probably come back to that in just a little bit. I'm pouring some more of this in here. I had more room in that cup left. There, there you can see it better. But eventually, you're going to see different areas on here. It takes a little bit, but it's going to separate. You're going to see three different layers. We'll come back to it and look at it. Let me read you another scripture right here. You say, Sherry, I just can't do it. I'm, I've asked Jesus in my heart. I go to church. The devil tempts me. I see things I like to do, and I just keep messing up. Well, you're still an overcomer, okay? You're just growing. I don't know if you've ever planted a garden and just watched something grow from a seed. You got to take care of that garden. You got to water it. You got to hoe it. You got to pull the weeds out. You got to take care of it, just like you got to take care of your heart. In 1 Peter 5, Jesus is talking about this. 5 8, it says, Be self controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a, war, a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You need to resist him. Stand firm in your faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. Everyone has asked Jesus in their heart. They are going to go through some type of suffering. But you got to stand firm. you got to be an overcomer. You're victorious in Jesus. The first step is asking Jesus in your heart. The second step is to love God. you got to open this Bible. What does God have for you today? I picked out four or five verses today. I'm not reading you four or five chapters, but I pick out the verse, and you know, if one touches your heart, you just need to pull that verse back out and pray and just sit there alone with God and listen to him because he has something to say. Now, I don't know. Has this had enough time to change? I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little cloudier looking now than it was, and we'll come back to it before the end. But there's a little separation. The person that asked Jesus in their heart, they're not going to do the same things and hang out doing it with people that do things that dishonor God. You're going to hang out with people that love God or you're going to share the love of God with people that need it. You know, but you are going to stand firm because you're victorious. You're an overcomer. Because Christ moved into you. He's in you. He sent the Holy Spirit to give you strength. And you can do it. I want to read you another scripture right here. Uh, let me go to... No. I should take these out as I do it right, right here. I want to read you this one, and I'm going to move this over. But, um, well, that one, we... Here it is. Here it is. I'm sorry, I got this Bible's all marked up. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? You got to remember that. Even when you're going through hard times, if God is for you, who can be against you? Now I'm going to move this over a little bit. I think I'll move it right here. And I'm going carefully. And now I now can see right now a separation. There's two areas right there and that's just the way life is as a christian things don't happen overnight except for that god comes into your heart but as you read and study his word you're going to have more of god in you and less of the world less sin if you've had trouble lying you know god is going to help you if you've had trouble in your life with uh, fighting, God is going to help you. I know growing up, I had trouble in my life. And we're going to pretend. Okay, I got another scripture for you, but I I'll read that later. But we're going to pretend right here that these cans, and I don't know if they're ready just yet. There might be a little bit of smoke in there. Let me go ahead and read you the scripture right here. They're on some heat right there. I want to go to Romans 16, 20. If you got your Bible, go ahead and turn to it. As a Christian, I want you to know this. The devil is not stronger than you. 
you are an overcomer. You read God's word, it's going to go in your heart, and it's going to come out when you need it. The Holy Spirit's there. He's going to, he's going to help you. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Now that's what I love. It doesn't say, Sherry, you have to take that devil and whoop him and put him under your feet. No. The Bible says, the God of, God of peace will crush Satan and he will put them under your feet. You see, the devil, he hadn't always been on earth. He was in heaven. In fact, I mean, he was a high-ranking dude up there. He led praise and worship. I mean, he, there was Michael, the archangel up there. But he got a little prideful. And he thought, man, I am as good as God. In fact, he went around telling other angels and convinced some of those angels that he was as good as God. And he got kicked out on this earth. He cannot go to heaven since Jesus rose from the dead and he sits on the right hand of God. Devil cannot go. He's only got one route, and that's to hell. But you have a choice. He doesn't have a choice anymore. He made his choice. He just thought more of himself than he did God. If you have trouble with pride and think more of what you're doing and what you can do than you do God, you need to think more of God and love God. Because you got to remember, remember when David fought Goliath and how all the army was scared? But David wasn't scared because he didn't compare Goliath to himself. He compared Goliath to God, and Goliath looked mighty small. Well, all your problems that you're going to have are going to look mighty small when you compare them to God. And it is God that crushes them and puts them under their feet. And let's just say this is God right here. All right? So God's just going to take it and crush it. See? It is crushed. All right, let's try it again. Let's see if we can crush another one there. All right, here we go. God is going to crush it. Just like that Bible says, that Bible verse says, God will crush the devil. He will crush the enemies in your life. And he will put them under your feet. All right, let's get another one there. Devil, he's a winner. There you go. Let's, well, I think we've seen enough right there, but for you to understand, one day when you realize of how weak the devil really is, he's like a lion. In 1 Peter 5 8, it says he's like a lion, you know, who wants to devour you. It says, like, he's really a wimp. He really has no teeth. He has no power over you. You are victorious. You are an overcomer in Christ Jesus. And God is going to help you through all the good times. And he's going to help you through the bad times. And he's going to crush the evil in this world and put him under your feet. And I don't know if you're listening online at church, uh, Pastor Rocky and Pastor Vanji, they read Psalms 91 every day, every Sunday at the end of the service, where God is going to take care of you. You're going to be put under his wings. You're going to live a long, long life serving God. And I got a puppet that wanted to sing a little bit about that, so let me go and get that puppet. Are you ready to go with the next song? I am so thankful that you prepared two songs.
That psalm was out of Psalms 91. 16 verses. You should read it. Get your mom and dad to read it with you because it's talking about how God loves you and how he protects you and how he's always with you. And it's got lots of promises in there. When you ask Jesus in your life, he comes in to stay. He's not just coming and saying he's got to go somewhere next week. And when you become a Christian, then you're going to live a separate life. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to look like this chocolate anymore. It's going to look separated from that chocolate because you're talking to the Lord. You're reading the Word. You're worshiping Him. Your life is going to change for the good. You're going to get stronger and stronger. You're an overcomer. The only way to become an overcomer is to ask Jesus in your heart. And listen, God is going to crush your enemies. You know, here, here's one right here. I don't have to. God is going to crush your enemies, and he's going to put them under your feet. So don't say that I can't do it. I'm not cut out for it, or that I want to have a good time first. Listen, the best part of living is living for the Lord. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And you're going to have an everlasting life with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and all the saints that have gone before us in heaven. And God loves you. He made a way for you. And I just thought maybe we could just take a minute to pray. You don't have to use my words. Use your words. What's in your heart? Confess with your heart. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And he will help you. He will help you. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. I ask you to forgive me of all the things I've done that's wrong. Come live in my life and help me to live for you every day. Help me to read your word every day. Help me to listen to you every day. Help me to walk with you every day. Thank you for going before me and taking out my enemies, people that are coming against me. Thank you, Lord, that I don't have to do that. I just have to remain faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I hope you understood there's a lot of verses in that Bible that will touch your heart. They may come back to you later on. It might not might be too many verses at one time, but just remember, it's ABCs. If you know your ABCs, admit you're a sinner, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. You're an overcomer, and he will fight for you. And he loves you. The key is to love him. Okay? Hey, we got something next week. If you can, come to... Uh, come to church at New Dimensions Charter Schools where Celebration meets at. It's on Highway 18. Like If you live in Morganton, it's kind of like you're going to Lenore. Look us up on the webpage. We'd love to see you. Read Psalm 91 tonight before you go to bed. You're just going to be amazed if you take the time and listen to what God is saying to you. Now, we love you guys. You have a good day. Bye.